Hey everyone, Dr. Luke Peterson here, physical therapist with the Knee Replacement Therapist. In this episode of the Knee to Know Show, we're going to talk about what exactly happens with your ligaments during your knee replacement surgery. Hi everyone, so today we're talking about the ligaments of your knee and what exactly happens with them or doesn't happen with them during your knee replacement procedure. So ligaments, to give you kind of a brief summary, are connective tissue, very um, fibrous connective tissue that attaches from one bone to another bone and their main goal and their main purpose is to provide stability to the different joints of your body. So your knee, your hip, your ankle, all of them have different ligaments of these connective tissue that very much provide stability, prevents the knee from doing movements and things that it shouldn't be doing basically. And so with your knee, there are four main ligaments, but first I wanna talk about the meniscus. So the meniscus isn't a ligament. The meniscus is a kind of a C-shaped, um, so both sides of your knee, it sits on your shin bone, the top of your shin bone, and it's this C-shaped um, soft tissue, and it's more acts as a shock absorber for your knee. And your meniscus during knee replacement surgery is going to be removed. So the meniscus is actually going to be replaced by the other components of your knee replacement. So you're going to have the metal component that sits on your shin, and then you're also going to have the um, plastic spacer that's going to sit between your shin um, component, your thigh bone, and your, or excuse me, your shin component, excuse me, your tibia, your shin bone component, and your femur, your thigh bone component. The spacer is this plastic component that sits in between. So your meniscus, that's going to be removed with knee replacement surgery. Um, so let's talk about your collateral ligaments. So your collateral ligaments are two ligaments that run laterally, run along the sides of your knee. So you have your medial collateral ligament, so it goes along the middle part of your knee, so it goes from your thigh bone to your shin bone, and then you have your lateral collateral ligament, so your lateral ligament goes from your thigh bone to your shin bone again, and this time on the outside of your knee. And with knee replacement surgery, these two ligaments, the medial and the lateral, are going to be retained. They're going to stay as part of your knee replacement and part of your knee after surgery. And what they actually do is these, knee, these ligaments are very important in that they have to be balanced. So if one ligament, one side of your knee is more tight or tighter than the other side of your knee, What's it, what it's going to cause is different problems with the biomechanics, with the movement and the alignment of your knee joint. So they actually are able to, during the surgery, during the procedure, the surgeon is able to actually move your knee. And if they have a computer assisted um, type of replacement, they're actually able to look at specific measurements of the length of the ligaments on each side of your knee. And they're able to balance out those ligaments. So balance out the length on each side of your knee. So they're very approximately close, usually equal or so close to equal that it um, can be considered equal. And what that allows is that good alignment, that good movement side to side of your knee, which is very important. So these ligaments are retained, they stay in your body, the surgeon is going to move the new knee to make sure these um, ligaments are balanced, they don't have to adjust the tension on one side or the other, and um, helps with just good biomechanical movement and alignment of the knee joint. Now let's talk about the cruciate ligaments. So cruciate um, means cross basically and so there's two ligaments your ACL or your anterior cruciate ligament and your PCL which is your posterior cruciate ligament and those two ligaments form a cross that goes right in the middle part of your knee. So they both go from the end of your thigh bone and attach down on your shin bone. And they provide, again, a lot of stability for the knee joint, 
prevent it from moving in positions that you don't want it to move, twisting excessively, um, bending side to side as well, um, too much forward or backward motion of one bone on the other. These are very important ligaments. Now, traditionally, with traditional knee replacement surgery, both of these ligaments are going to be removed. Um, the the uh, part of the bone, of your shin bone, where that ligament actually attaches, so where your anterior cruciate ligament and your PCL attach, actually has to be kind of cleaned off, has to be cut. So by doing so, they then have to remove those ligaments to perform the knee replacement surgery. So traditionally, they don't save the cruciate ligaments. They're not retained. They're just removed from the surgery, from the knee. Now, some different types of knee replacement surgeries have come out. Um, different things. So for one example is what's called a posterior stabilized knee replacement. And in this replacement, they again remove both your PCL and your ACL ligament, but they actually put a little bit of a, what we, they call a post. So a little bit of an elevated part of the knee replacement in one part of it. You can Google this to see a better picture. And that post acts as a stability, so it acts as a replacement or a substitute for your PCL ligament. So the ligaments are removed, but they put this little post that helps to add stability to your new knee. So that's posterior stabilized. Then there's what they call cruciate retaining knee replacement. So in this procedure, in cruciate retaining, they're actually going to retain or keep the PCL but then they're still going to have to remove the ACL ligament. So they keep the PCL, but remove the ACL. Um, again, this provides a little bit more stability, but you're again removing that ACL ligament um, from your knee. And then they have what's called bicruciate retaining. So in this instance, they're retaining both the ACL and the PCL ligament. So with cruciate retaining, they're retaining all the ligaments, keeping the ACL, keeping the PCL. Now the thing with this procedure, you would think that's very good. I want to keep all my ligaments. I want my knee to be as normal as, as possible. Um, the thing is this is a very technical surgery, kind of difficult to perform. And they're kind of unsure if it really adds any benefit in terms of increased stability, increased ability to do anything. Um, there is obviously the thought that if you're able to retain these ligaments, retain the ACL, retain the PCL, that individuals are going to have a lot more stability. They're going to be able to do different movements, different activities that would be a lot harder if they didn't have this stability in these normal um, structures that are in your knee joint. Um, but it's still kind of debated if this is worth it or not. Um, a lot of times if someone has significant arthritis in their knee, these ligaments are actually have been degraded, degenerated um, over time, so they're actually not very well functioning anyways. They might have some tears in it or partial tears, um, so that's one thing to keep in mind. And it's just kind of a really more difficult procedure, and they haven't really been able to show if it provides any significant benefit to keep the ACL and the PCL ligaments. So it's really kind of an inconclusive, debatable thing right now. It really depends on the surgeon and what's going on. The very common and the very traditional um, approach and the more popular approach in most instances is you're going to remove the ligaments, remove the PCL, remove the ACL. You might potentially keep the PCL ligament, but almost in all instances you're going to remove that ACL ligament. Now, something to keep in mind is that if you have a partial knee replacement, then in that instance, most of the time, you're actually going to keep both of those ligaments. You're going to keep the ACL and keep the PCL, and it, which is probably why one of many reasons why people who have partial knee replacements often report a little bit faster recovery and are typically able to be a little bit more active, do a little bit more. Of course, these individuals a lot of times are a little bit younger as well, um, a little bit healthier, but one of potential benefit of keeping those two ligaments able maybe to do a little bit more functionally, a little bit more dynamic activity. So just to give a brief recap of everything, so in most instances you're going to keep 
your collateral ligaments. You're going to keep your medial and lateral ligaments of the knee. The surgeon's going to balance those out, help improve the alignment, help to improve the movement and biomechanics of the knee. Most instances, you're going to remove the ACL, you're going to remove and take out the PCL. In some surgeries, you can keep the PCL but remove the ACL. And then there are some limited surgeries that are performed where they actually keep both the PCL and the ACL, but the benefit of them, this again is debatable and um, not fully determined yet. So talk to your surgeon about this. They're gonna have the best experience of what has worked really well for them, what the research shows versus one option versus the other, what are the pros and cons for you as an individual. But just to give you an idea of traditionally and commonly what happens and then what are some of the um, other options that might be out there. Thank you very much for watching everyone. This has been the Need to Know Show. Again, as always, please feel free to subscribe. I post videos every day about everything related to knee replacement, knee replacement surgery, preparation, recovery, and everything related to knee pain and osteoarthritis and managing it effectively. Thank you very much for watching everyone. Have a great day.